What's up guys, I'm Roko, and today I'm going to be showing you a full guide on how to obtain the Hive Mind Flying Mount, which was added in 8.1. Now, before I go into this guide, I do want to point out that eventually you're going to require a party to complete this secret. You cannot solo this, and you need a group of five people to finish the secret. However, the first parts of the riddle are soloable. So with that said, let's get started on how to obtain the Hive Mind Mount. Okay, so the first thing you want to do to get the Hive Mind Mount is you want to head to Shatrath City. In Shatrath City, you want to head down into this area here. You can actually input coordinates if you want, which I'll put on the screen. Which will take you to an NPC called Grifta. To start this uh, riddle, you have to actually buy an item called the Talisman of Treasure Tracking. So once you get here, as you can see, there's a bunch of people. Grifta is who you're looking for. And he sells the Talisman of True Treasure Tracking. So you want to purchase the item and have it equipped. Make sure you equip it. As you can see, there are clues here. If you don't have this equipped, uh, let me put my Heart of Azeroth. These won't glow. So that's how you know they're clues. So the actual start of the quest itself, or the riddle, is wearing the item so you need to wear the item and this part is telling you what to do next so what you need to do is you need to get four monocles keep in mind uh, that the four monocles are not actually required to continue on into the riddle however if you don't have any at all you may have a harder time finding a group which I'll explain later on so if you want to get some of them or all of them that's up to you I decided to get all of them just to improve my chances of getting into a party and uh, they're not actually that hard to get. There's one that's uh, a little bit time consuming, uh, but there's an add-on that will help you with it. So, all right, so the first monocle you're gonna go after is the blue monocle. This is actually one of the easiest ones to get and it starts right here at the table. All you need to do is make sure you keep your uh, neck equipped and you need to click this letter here. And this actually is an anagram that leads to the anticipation for Deathwing, which leads you to the next area where the next letter is which is in High Mountain. Okay, so the first letter for the blue monocle actually leads to High Mountain. Uh, the way we figured that is the anagram for the letter uh, is Anticipation for Deathwing. And there's an, actually an area in High Mountain, which is Prepfoot High Mountain. This is the flight path here you want to go to. All right, so once you arrive at Prepfoot High Mountain, you just want to head over to the rightmost tent here. And when you get inside, the letter is just down here on top of a crate. You click the letter, you get your next clue of all of guys' cures for nature. The most liberating is death. This is actually another anagram for only the capitalized letters, which is Seat of the Guardian, which is Medivh and Karazhan. So that means our next place we're going to go is Karazhan. Once you've arrived at Karazhan, you want to make sure that you enter the old entrance and not the new entrance up around to the right. Because you want to enter the level 70 version of Karazhan, the old 10-man raid, not the new Karazhan. So make sure you enter the correct one. Okay, so once you've gotten inside of Karazhan, you want to go all the way to the end of the dungeon. Uh, past chess, make sure you beat chess. Once you get past chess, you want to head up to uh, the ramp here. And it's going to, instead of going right like you would to the boss, you'll just take a left here. Head down the hallway. Inside this door, go around into another door here, and you're now inside Medev Medev's chambers, and the note is actually right here on the chair, and that's the next note. The next note reads, I sat dumbfounded watching as the most subtle rat reached for the cheese a third time in under an hour. Uh, once again, this is another anagram. The capital letters form a partial anagram, which was Bramble Undead, which leads to the next area, which is Razorfin Downs. Alright, so the next place you want to go is Razorfin Downs. Razorfin Downs is located in just north of Thousand Needles, uh, right here in this area. So you can fly there from Ogremar, or you can head to uh, Tenaris as well, whichever way you want to get there. Uh, to, you don't want to go to the right, that's uh, Razorfin Crawl. Razorfin Downs is actually over here. Uh, you can just fly into the entrance for those that have never been to Razor, Razorfin Downs. Uh, it's just inside uh, the Bramble here. 
and uh, towards the back is the entrance so you can just fly around if you can fly navigate until you find the entrance which is in the very back so as you can see the entrance is just right down here that's the entrance to Razorfin Downs. Once you get inside Razorfin Downs, you want to clear all the way to the next to the last boss. Alright, so once you get to the end of Razorfin Downs, the boss Death Speaker Blackthorn, the note is actually right behind him. You can fight him if you want, it doesn't really matter. So the note is right here on a crate behind him. Click the note, and the note reads, Mrs. Sin will accompany you down the longest streets of the underworld. Once again, this is another anagram for the capitalized letters. Mrs. Sin, the streets of, and it comes out to Mistress of the Nest, which is Mount Hyjal, Shrine of the Aviana. Once you've reached Mount Hyjal, you want to fly over to the Shrine of Aviana. There's also a flight point if you don't want to fly there yourself. And when you get to the Shrine of the Aviana, you want to actually go into the highest building in the tree, which is up here on this ramp, right here around the corner. And this is the note you're looking for. right here on the table. Click the note, and it says the elite champions will rule the world with the mightiest FC. So once again with the capital letters, we get another anagram which is for the derelict flow. The derelict flow refers to the iron wall dam which is in Ice Crown, which is our next location. Alright, so once you get to Ice Crown, you want to head to this gate right here that I'm circling on the map. And when you get to the Iron Wall Dam, the letter is going to be on the tip right here. The very tip. If you scroll in, you'll see it. And there it is. So again, this dam right here. The very tip of it. And there is the last letter, sixth letter, that says Re, Re Codex of Mastering Sine Waves. And this leads you to the seventh letter, which is the uh, Nizal Temple in Town Long Steps. Uh, the anagram led to Ox Residence, which is where the Ox Celestial lives. So on to the next location in Town Long Steps. All right, so here we are in Town Long Steps, and the area you want to head to is the Nizal Temple, which I'm circling on the map here. Once you get to the temple, the uh, letter is going to be located near a bell which is right here. This is the bell and the letter is actually going to be right on the side here. And that is the next letter and it reads, Mice look so sad when they have a cleft lip, hoping you succeed, Anna. And this is going to lead to the final letter to receive the blue monocle, which is in Caldera and Borean Tundra. Alright, so the quickest way to Borean Tundra is actually at Ogremar if you're a horde, and you can just take the uh, Borean Tundra and Zeppelin here to uh, Borean Tundra. Alright, so once you've gotten to Borean Tundra, you want to head over to Caldera, which is in the northwest part of the map. Once you've gotten to Caldera, you want to go to the Pinnacle, which is part of the anagram, the Pinnacle of Magic, which is the highest point in Caldera. Alright, so once you get up here uh, to Caldera, you want to go up to the highest point, uh, which is up here in the northwest part of the map of Borean Tundra. This is the highest point, and you want to actually come down here. And uh, you won't see it because I've already gotten it, but there's going to be a chest here. And the chest will contain the uh, blue crystal monocle. So look for a purple chest right here in this area. Once you've gotten it, you will have successfully gotten the first of four monocles and the blue one. Alright, so the next monocle we're going to solve is the green monocle. And it's located inside of the dungeon Skyreach. At the end of the dungeon, you want to kill the boss if you want to. And to the left, you're going to find a panel. At the panel, we'll be given instructions on how to complete this puzzle. But actually, it doesn't really help at all from what we've gathered. Click the puzzle, and you're going to see a bright light and a sun. As you can see, the, the puzzle is uh, pretty complicated looking, but uh, there's actually a solution, and it's very easy to do. So to complete this, you just want to do the puzzle in the following order. Right. Up. Down. Up, right, right, up, left, down, up, left, and down. And that's it. 
Once you've done that, loot the chest and you will receive the green crystal monocle. And next we're going to go solve the yellow monocle. Alright, so to get the yellow monocle, you want to head to the Halls of Origination dungeon. So head to Halls of Origination, which is located in uh, Old Ear. Alright, once you get inside of uh, Halls of Origination, you want to clear through until you get past the first boss. Alright, so once you've cleared through the first boss, you want to go ahead and head to the next room until you reach an elevator. Alright, so once you get to the elevator, you want to make sure you still have your neck equipped. This is very important for all of the clues. Uh, you want to walk up to the elevator and there's actually a device in the middle that you can click. Click the device. And once you click it, you're going to see a bunch of constellations and a bunch of colors. And at this point, you're going to have to actually go down there. And in order to get down there, what you need to do is you need to head straight north. And once you get in there, you want to take a right and go down the stairs. And when you get down the stairs, you will reach the constellation room with your next puzzle, which is required to get the yellow monocle. This puzzle is actually very difficult and can take hours depending on your ability to solve these types of puzzles. Fortunately, there was an add-on created to make this puzzle very simple. It is called HHPH, and I'll have the link in my description for you guys to go and get that. I almost want to say it's required, unless you want to brute force this puzzle and spend a lot of time on it. Alright, so once you have the add-on, it's going to look something like this. So what you need to do is you need to physically go around the room and fill in the colors or the symbols as indicated on the screen. So this may take some time. It took me about 15-20 minutes to fill in the entire grid. But I promise you this is much faster than going through and trying to solve it yourself. And just so we're clear, the, uh, the different symbols around the room, uh, the ones that you can click, there's one that looks like a plus sign, one that looks like an X sign, and one that looks like a circle. It's more of like a, um, a stop sign, actually. Uh, so to make sure you fill those in, too, as you go along and you don't miss any at all. Alright guys, so once you filled in every single square, it's going to look something like this. And when you're confident you've gotten everything in there correctly, you want to hit the button Go. And when you hit the Go button, it's going to actually tell you exactly which ones to click and how many times you should click it. So all you need to do is go through each row, click it the amount of times it says to click it. And uh, if it doesn't have a number at all, then you don't click, click it. So as you can see in the video, I'm going through and I'm going to click every single one the way it says. So once you've clicked them all the number of times it says to, the constellations are going to disappear and a chest is going to spawn in the middle, and that will give you the yellow crystal monocle. Once you've got the yellow monocle, you can move on to the next clue, which is the final one, and that is the red monocle. Here we are guys for the final monocle, and that is the red crystal monocle. This is the most time consuming of the four, as it requires a lot of traveling. To obtain the red crystal monocle, you want to head to Vashir. Before you do anything, it's important to understand how this puzzle works. It is a trading puzzle, in which you need to trade specific items to different NPCs to ultimately end up with the items you need to purchase the red crystal monocle. The catch is, these items have limited durations, so it's possible to fail this even if you don't know what you're doing ahead of time. The white items are 5 minute duration, the green items are 30 minute duration, and their blue items are one hour duration. So the purpose for this guide is I recommend watching how to do it, knowing where to go, and then going back and doing it. The reason you don't want to fail is that this puzzle actually costs in-game gold. It will cost you 2,380 gold to complete this puzzle, and if you fail you will essentially waste your gold. The goal here is to collect a set of items for the NPC Sir Finley Murgleton. You will need 5 scintillating murloc skin lotion, 5 potent gastropod gloops, and 5 captured cavitations in order to purchase the monocle. However, think of this puzzle in three parts. The first part is to acquire the lotion, since it has the 1 hour duration, then the gloops, and then the cavitations, because those have 30 minute durations. I do want to point out that in order to do this secret, you do need to fly above the water. You will not have enough time by swimming, so you do need to fly above the water between locations in order to get there in a timely manner. So, keeping all that in mind, the first thing you want to do is get the lotion. In order to get the lotion, you need to get 50 glitter tail glitter and 40 symbiotic plankton. However, to get the glitter and the plankton requires 
other items to be purchased. So, let's start with the 50 Glitter Tail Glitter. What you need to do before anything is input the 6 following coordinates. These will give you the locations you need to go to ultimately end up with your Glitter Tail Glitter. So, the first thing you need to do is buy 500 seashells from Sir Finley Murgleton himself. Once you have the 500 seashells, you then want to head to the Volatile Violet Scale and exchange them for 100 cavity-free Great Shark Teeth. Once you have your Shark Teeth, you want to head to the Manta Stargazer and exchange them for 50 Razor Eel Larva. Once you have those, you want to head over to Little Whaley and exchange them for 250 well-fed doctor fish. Once you have that, you want to head over to Gloomy Bluefin and exchange it for 10 freshly molted crab skin. Once you've done all of those things, then you can go to Old Fish Breath and exchange the skin for 50 Glitter Tail Glitter. That's the first part. The second part is to obtain the symbiotic pla plankton. So. You need to input six more coordinates. I recommend doing the coordinates in individual parts, that way you don't have your screen cluttered with all the different places to go. So, at this point you can right click and clear your waypoints, and then input the new coordinates. Don't worry about the time, the 30 minutes is actually very lenient, so inputting the coordinates doesn't take a whole lot of your time away. I actually finished this puzzle with like 20 minutes to spare on the last uh, green item, so I wouldn't worry about the time. It's not that tight. So Once you've inputted the next six coordinates for your 40 symbiotic plankton You want to head to Sir Finley Morgleton buy 80 seashells Once you've bought your 80 seashells Then you want to go over to the gloomy blue fin and buy two giant toenail clippings Once you've got that head over to the little carp and exchange the toenails for Four Makura Eyes. Once you have that, head over to the Volatile Violet Scale and exchange the eyes for one accidentally severed seahorse fin. Once you have that, head over to the Crimson Angerfish and exchange the fin for three shiny sea serpent scales. Once you have all of these items, you can go back to Mana Stargazer and exchange the serpent scales for 40 symbiotic plankton. Now that you have your 50 Glitter Tail Glitter and your 40 Symbiotic Plankton, you can head back over to Sir Finley Murgleton and exchange the Glitter and Plankton for the 5 Scintillating Murloc Skins. This is one of the 3 items you need to purchase the monocle. On to the Gastropod Gloops. In order to get the Gastropod Gloops, you also need to input 5 coordinates this time. First thing you need to do is buy 300 seashells from Sir Finley Murgleton himself. After that, head over to Old Fish Breath and buy 30 Vantus Black Squid Ink. Once you have that item, head over to the Blackfish and exchange the Squid Ink for 30 Super Slick Eel Slimes. After you've gotten that, head over to the Volatile Violet Scale and exchange the Slime for 3 Rock Encrusted Whelk Shells. And once you have all of those items completed, you have your shells, Head over to the Little Carp and exchange the shells for 5 potent gastropod gloops. So at this point you should have your murloc lotion, you should have your gastropod gloops, and the last thing you should need is the captured bubbles. So once again clear off your waypoints and input the following 5 coordinates. So the last thing you need is the 5 captured cavitation bubbles. You need to do the following. Input the 5 coordinates as I told you. Head over to Sir Finley Murgleton, and then you need to buy 1,500 seashells. After you have your 1,500 seashells, head over to Little Whaley and buy 300 Very Pretty Coral. Once you've got that, head over to Old Fish Breath and exchange the coral for 100 Iridescent Shimmeray Skins. Once you have your skins, go to the Crimson Angerfish and exchange the skins for 20 Luxurious Luxscale Scales. Once you have your scales, you can go back to the Blackfish and finally exchange the scales for 5 Captured Cavitation Bubbles. 
congratulations, you now have all the items needed to purchase the red monocle. All you need to do now is head back to Sir Finley Myrtleton and turn in those three items for your red crystal monocle. And that's it. That is the red crystal monocle, and that completes the four monocles needed to move on to the next step, which is the Withered in Suramar. Alright guys, now that you have all or some of the monocles, it's time to find a group. You can utilize the pre-made group finder, or find friends who are also working on the mount. Make sure you specify a war mode is on or off, as the puzzle will not work without mixed groups. I found this out firsthand myself. Have players switch their war mode setting in Orgrimmar or Stormwind to ensure everyone is either on or off of it. The reason 5 people are required is all the puzzles to follow all require a group. It is important to note that the group you start with is the group you need to end with, so make sure you recruit individuals who are dedicated until you've attained the mount. From this point on, until you obtain the mount can take up to a few hours, depending on how well you handle the final steps, so make sure you grab people who are dedicated. Now throughout Suramar, there are four withered who each have different colored glowing eyes, one red, blue, green, and yellow, the same color as your monocles. When you equip the monocle, each respective withered will become attackable. The first letter of each name indicates which color you should equip. Rakei is red, Bloman is blue, Jill Yuzi is green, and Yorlan is yellow. This is why it's important to obtain as many monocles as you can, that way it's easier to assign people to certain wither. However, if you only have a few, recruit other players accordingly for which color you may still need. Once you have all your players recruited, and they are positioned in the four locations of each withered, have each player equip their monocle. As you can see, the withered becomes attackable. In comes the fifth member of your party's role. Now you remember how I said earlier that you can technically complete the riddle without a single monocle. That's because that person can take the fifth role. And what the fifth member's role is, is there's a building in Suramar that has four colored beams. Red, blue, green, and yellow. When your withered is brought down to zero HP, he will begin to channel draw power, which will temporarily disable one of the beams. Your goal here as a group is to simultaneously bring down all four beams together so the fifth person can go into the room. Keep in mind that while the secret is new, others may be working on this step as well, so it may be difficult to time them all together, so it will definitely take a few tries, it certainly did for me. Once your fifth member successfully gets into the room, he needs to find and click a small cat toy behind a pillow. When this is done successfully, the player will take X amount of damage and be teleported out. Make note of the damage taken, as that number is required for the next part of the clue, which takes you into Court of Stars. In our scenario, the amount of damage the fifth member took was 99,364 damage. Each number will be unique depending on your party ID, which is why I said it's important to stick with the same group until the end, otherwise you have to start over from the withered step. Once you have your number, head into Court of Stars, the difficulty does not matter. You are looking for an NPC named Lady Shatan, which is located in this building on the map. You will need to clear through some trash as well as defeat the first boss to reach her. Once you've reached Lady Shatan, you will notice that she has five kitties that can be pet. This is where your number comes in. Assign each player to one kitty. The order of cats is Fluffy, Shadow, Mew, Ash, and Bella. You do not have to pet them in that order, just make sure the number corresponds to that order. In my example, we would pet Fluffy 9 times, Shadow 9 times, Mew 3 times, Ash 6 times, and Bella 4 times. However, the duration of each pet lasts only 15 seconds, so you need to start petting your kitties with the highest amount of stacks first, then the lowest. Also. It is possible to take smaller than 5 digits of damage from the cat toy. For example, you could take 364 damage or 3644 damage. If this happens, you put zeros where Fluffy and Shadow would be, since they're the first two. In the 364 example, you'd pet Fluffy 0, Shadow 0, Mew 3, Ash 6, and Bella 4 times. In the 3644 example, you'd pet Fluffy 0, Shadow 3, Mew 6, Ash 4, 
and Bella four times. As long as you time it so the kitties with the highest stack start first, and the ones with the lower ones start a bit later, they should all get the right amount of stacks, jump into the center, and then a void orb will appear. Click the orb to move on to the jumping puzzle. Welcome to the jumping puzzle. The goal of this puzzle is to get all five players to the other side without falling off. If you fall off, you all need to dismount and start over. There is a specific pattern you must follow to successfully get all five members to the other side. Before you do anything, you need to assign each player a number, one through five. Now that you have your own number assigned, you will follow the guide linked in the description on what to do. You start off with player one, who will move forward two times, then the second moves forward left forward, and so on and so forth. Follow the link guide on which moves to make, and make sure each player does every move in that exact order. Because of the complication of this puzzle, I highly recommend using communications and having one person call out every move. Player two As you can hear in the video left. now, someone in our Discord was calling out each move that we needed to make so that we did forward. not get confused and it did not take so much time to type them out instead. Type is going to go forward once. You're just going to click the platform. Okay. Two is going to go left. Also, so that you are not confused, at the end, you will notice it says for player three to reset. All this means is player three will intentionally dismount the disc and re-enter the far left disc that is available from the very start. Then continue the rest of the steps required in the guide. If you do it correctly, all five players should be on the other end and then they are able to dismount, fall down, and run up to the door. When all five members reach the door, it will become openable and this will lead you to the final step, the light lock puzzle. Now we are at the final step, the light lock puzzle. This puzzle seems really frustrating at first, but it's actually pretty easy and it just requires some trial and error. This puzzle has three very important rules. As long as you understand and follow them, you will solve this puzzle in a timely manner. Rule number one, one group member is able to cross with any other one person. This is called the traveler. Rule number two, the traveler can also cross over with two specific other players. This is called the trio. And rule number three, no one member can cross alone, only two or three can cross. No more, no less. If you cross over and are met with this sound, Entry denied. it means your combination did not work. If your combination worked, you won't hear a sound at all. You'll just stay on the disc until you make your next move. So the goal here is to figure out who is the traveler and what the trio is. Once you figure this out, it's very easy to do the rest. In my video, Tandra was the traveler and me and Pwncakes were the other two in the trio. From this point, all you need to do is the following. Mark your traveler with a skull and your other two trio members with X and star. You can mark your non-trio members if you want we chose not to as they both serve the same purpose. Now use this graphic to understand what you need to do. Your goal is to move the non-trio players, then move your trio across at the end. When you understand who your trio and traveler are, it becomes pretty easy on how to solve it. Once you have marked your trio, mark your unmarked players with triangle and square, and then follow these exact steps. Step 1. Send the trio across, drop off star at the finish line. Step two, head back to the start, pick up triangle and drop off X. Step three, head back to the finish line, drop off triangle and pick up star. Step four, head back to the start and pick up X. And for step five, repeat steps one through four, only replacing triangle with square. Once you've successfully gotten all five members to the finish line, step up to the door and it will become openable.
The last room is the hive mind room. Position all five members in the shadow circles. Have all five click the hive mind in the middle, and you will be rewarded with the hive mind. Congratulations on your new mount. If this guide helped you in any way, please like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe. It really helps me out. You have no idea. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you at the next secret.